Which bathroom appliance would be the worst life preserver? The sink. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 action crime film called Avengement. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. The movie begins with a prisoner named Kane Burgess, escorted by the police to a hospital where he learns of his mother's death. Kane tells them that he wants to see her body, so he is escorted to the morgue where he sees his mother. With an intense expression on his face, he takes a deep breath and beats the shit out of the cops and escapes the hospital. He makes his way to a bar that does not let him enter, saying only the people having a membership card are allowed inside. He has no choice but to beat the shit out of the bouncers to enter the bar. There we see a bartender named Bez who serves him whiskey. He overhears one of the patrons named Toon, describing how an unknown assailant killed a fellow gangster named Rook. Toon explains how the incident actually took place. He and Rook went outside on a Tuesday night, and there they were attacked by a man they did not seem to recognize. Toon then says that Rook got knocked out, and he is the one who tried to go after the enemy. This is when Kane can't help himself but laugh out loud. When everyone looks at him, he says that Toon is spitting shit, he is just telling lies. After the argument, Kane stops talking, and Toon resumes his story. Kane, however, again intervenes, asking Toon to tell them the truth about what actually happened that night. This is when he goes on to tell everyone that he is the one who attacked them that night, and Toon is an absolute coward, because when he attacked them, Toon just ran away without helping the man he was with that night. Toon, of course, tells everyone that Kane is lying. The bouncers get back and attack Kane again. He then brings out a gun and threatens everyone. There is a whole crew there, and he tells them about their boss named Lincoln. This is when a man named Hyde comes out of the other room and complains about the too much noise in the bar. His rant is, however, cut short when he sees Kane with a gun. Hyde knows that he has seen this man somewhere, and after much contemplation, he remembers who he is. It turns out that Kane is Lincoln's baby brother. He tells everyone about Kane, saying he got busted while he was out there in the field, and he has been sentenced to five years in prison. He then asks the bartender to give him another drink, but she does not comply. One of the patrons trying to intervene is shot in the kneecap by Kane, who blames Hyde and Lincoln for his condition. He then tells everyone to put their phones in the mobile jar, while the man shot in the knee keeps screaming from pain, and Kane, getting annoyed by that, knocks him out with a knee to his head. Hyde finally asks Toon if Kane was the one who attacked them the other night and demands Toon tell them the truth, but Toon still says that he is not the one. Kane then gives them a box, he tells them to open it, and inside they find Rook's hand. All of them freak out, and Kane says he hopes that it's enough proof that he is the one who attacked Toon and Rock that night. Hyde then walks up to him, pours himself a drink, and starts talking to Kane. He asks him if prison has turned him into an emotionless robot, and Kane says that prison did no such thing, but his brother did. He then hits Hyde with the butt of his gun and tells him to call Lincoln right away. The crew members then notice his many scars and ask him where he got them. Kane tells them that his beloved brother is the one responsible for all the scars he got in prison. Kane then starts narrating that he got sent to the notorious London prison, HMP Belmarsh, and had to fight for survival in prison due to a £20,000 price put on his head. In a flashback, it is revealed that Kane used to be a skilled but quick-tempered martial artist who caused Lincoln, a loan shark, and several gangsters to lose substantial amounts of money every time he won. Kane is in a room with Lincoln's men, Stokes and Hook. Kane tells Lincoln that he wants to talk to him in private, but Lincoln tells him that he is in the middle of a game, and he should spit out whatever he has to say. Kane tells his brother that he has a business idea for him. He wants him to lend him some money to start up, but the man tells his little brother that he does not like lending money to family. When Kane is about to leave, Lincoln tells him to stop, saying if he wants that money, he can do a job for him and have the money. Kane knows that it must be something illegal. Despite being reluctant, he agrees and Lincoln tells Hyde to fill him in on the details. Kane is, of course, pulled into the world of crime when he is asked to rob Mark, who has retrieved a package from one of Lincoln's gangsters in exchange for money. 
Kane succeeds in stealing the package from a middle-aged woman, who pursues him and gets killed in an accident during the chase. The scene then changes back to the present, and Hyde is asked to shut up, as Kane continues telling the story. He tells everyone how he was treated in prison, that despite not having any criminal record, he was thrown into a jail that is suited only to the most hardened prisoners, and that happened because of his brother. In a flashback, we see him walking from his room to the bathroom in prison, when a giant man blocks his way and attacks him. Kane is a good fighter, and at first he beats the shit out of everyone, but they are too many, and he is brutally tortured, his mouth is smashed against the stairs. One day, his mother comes to see him in prison, and tells him that she is trying to get a good lawyer, but is short on money. He asks her to get money from Lincoln, but his mother tells him that he has done nothing to help him. When he is getting back to his cell after seeing his mother, he is again attacked by two prisoners, who give him a significant blow on the face. This is when two guards enter the scene and drag him out of there. He then tells the prison official that all that he did was in self-defense because they were the ones who attacked him first. The man, however, does not listen to him and tells that his sentence has been increased by another year. Kane then tells everyone that he eventually started adapting to life in prison as he had no other choice. He would get into fights frequently and life got better when people started recognizing him as a threat. He says that he was shocked at the prisoner's behavior toward him. He could not understand why everyone wanted him dead. Then there came the day when he found out why. He got into a fight with the prisoners who attacked him, and when he was beating the shit out of one of them, the man finally told him that he has no beef with him. It is his own brother who wants them to kill Cain. We are back to the bar yet again, and Cain asks Hyde why they want to kill him, and why in the world were they willing to spend so much money on his death. Hyde does not agree, and tells him these are all lies, while Cain continues the story. He tells them that one day while he was out in the hallway, a group of prisoners attacked him, and when he beat them up in self-defense, his sentence got increased by two years, despite the fact that he was not the culprit. Cain says that after that incident, he accepted that this is his life, and started indulging in activities that the other prisoners did. He started beating prisoners up, and enjoyed it very much. We see that the prison official calls him again, and tells him that his sentence is again increased by one year, but Kane does not give a crap. We see another flashback, where Kane is bored of fighting prisoners, so he beats up some guards as well. Kane is then taken to solitary prison. His mother is not allowed to see him, and when she finally does, she asks him what it is about. This is when she gives him the heartbreaking news that she has been diagnosed with cancer and is not going to be around for a long time. She tells him that Lincoln has been taking care of her lately. She then asks him what he wanted to tell her about Lincoln, but he dodges the question. Hyde then tells him that he is sorry about what happened and adds that he did not know that his mother was that sick. Toon and another man say that they need to pee, but Kane tells them that they are not allowed to go to the bathroom. He tells them to go to a corner and do their business. Kane is then told by Hyde that he was never a gangster. Kane, however, advises him not to think of him as the man to whom he gave the job back then, and he has come a long, long way since that. We then see in another flashback that O'Hara, who has since learned about the bounty, once again asks Kane to give up his brother. Kane agrees on the condition that he be allowed to visit his dying mother at a hospital. They are too late, and Kane misses his chance, but escapes custody after violently beating the police officers who delayed his visit. By night, Lincoln arrives and is similarly threatened by Kane. He appeals to Kane's better nature, not realizing the changes he has been forced to undergo. Hyde mocks Kane and insults the people they conned. Enraged at his flippant attitude at destroying so many lives, including his own, Kane shoots and kills Hyde in front of the others. Realizing that Kane has changed, Lincoln drops his pretense and admits to ordering a hit. Kane angrily says that he never spoke to the police and that Sergeant Evans admitted to spreading the false rumor before Kane killed him. Although surprised at the viciousness of Kane's vengeance, Lincoln says he never even cared whether it was true. The real reason he ordered the hit on Kane was that he lost respect from just the rumor, which Lincoln couldn't abide. After proving that he has emptied Lincoln's bank account, Kane announces that he will now kill Lincoln and offers to let everyone else leave. 
Toon leaves but returns with a submachine gun, planning to ambush Kane before being quickly subdued by him. The rest are killed in the ensuing fight. Lincoln vows to recover, and with all the guns emptied, attacks Kane with a knife. Kane eventually overpowers and stabs his brother, killing him. He then morbidly leaves Bez behind and stumbles out of the bar before collapsing on a nearby bench. In his office, Detective O'Hara discovers that Lincoln's bank account has been divided amongst his victims by Kane. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more video like this.